Thank you for joining me again as we talk about ways we can advance the work of God on this earth. Exercising our evangelism muscles, perhaps a new concept to you, but in many churches, for many Christians, how we go about sharing the gospel, especially in the culture, the society in which we live, has become more and more of a mystery. We used to think that we could simply begin with a gospel presentation, proclamation, perhaps a little persuasion, and that people would respond. However, in a world, a culture that has become more and more illiterate biblically, I find there are some other activities, some other things we can do that will help advance evangelistic conversations, to initiate spiritual conversations. So I want to think with you for a few moments about the importance of exercise and specifically exercising your evangelism muscles. My wife and I exercise several times each week. As we have grown older, we've come to recognize the importance of keeping our muscles active and strong. Physically, we're able to do more. We're able to do more for a longer period of time because we exercise. We're stronger, we have more endurance. I think there's a principle. It has to do with evangelism muscles. Are there exercises that we as Christians can do that would help us build evangelism muscles? I think the answer is yes. Exercising a muscle simply means using that muscle repeatedly in order to build strength and endurance. When I was younger, I loved to run. The more I ran, the further I could run, the longer I could run, more distance, more time, the faster I could run, and I found it more and more enjoyable. So those were the results of exercising those muscles. More distance, more time, more speed, more joy, more often. I think the same results can be experienced as we exercise our evangelism muscles. More spiritual conversations with more people, more opportunities that we see those opportunities and we see them more often. So the question, how can we exercise? our evangelism muscles. That's the subject of this brief video study. Well, first of all, we are moving evangelistic conversations forward when we are simply present and God's presence. When we, as we go forth into the world, everywhere we go, all that we say, all that we do, all that we are, our attitudes, our manner of speech, radiating the presence of Jesus in all of the aspects of our life, being that kind of an example, being present for people and being Jesus' presence. That means talking about a lot of different kinds of things, getting to know people, establishing relationships, but just being there. There is a certain need for presence. One of the first factors in effective evangelism is simply being present, developing relationships, bridges across which the gospel can go. So, and it takes practice. One has to practice those abilities to listen and to talk and to initiate spiritual conversations. But that's the, the next muscle to be exercised. And that is begin to experiment, begin to think about how can I bring this conversation, how can I bring this relationship around to spiritual matters? On my website, which I will share as we conclude this video, I have a list of 41 spiritual conversation starters, simply questions you can ask or ways that you can approach within a conversation very naturally, very normally, spiritual conversation. But there's also the need to exercise our muscles just learning to talk about Jesus, learning to include Jesus in our daily conversations. As one author described it, put in a good word for Jesus. Every time you get an opportunity, put in a good word for Jesus. So we exercise our evangelism muscles by learning to be presence, by being Jesus' presence, also by simply learning to talk about Jesus initiating spiritual conversations. 
another skill, if you will, another muscle that needs to be exercised, learning how to ask questions, how to develop interest in other people, and how to evaluate needs. Asking questions, open questions, transparent questions, not simply yes or no questions, but questions that require interaction, response, so that we come to know other people and we begin to think, we begin to evaluate, we're assessing needs because as sowers of the seed, our task is always to be seeking the point of entry, the, the time of entry, how can we sow the seed effectively? And that has to do with learning to ask questions so that we can evaluate hard. So we can develop what I call evangelistic perception. You want to understand the concept of evangelistic perception? Think of the parable of the sower and the soils, different kinds of soil, and we have to be able to perceive what's going on in the life of another person. And all of those things are not natural for many of us. And so as we try to do these things, as we try to be Jesus' presence, initiate spiritual conversation, learn to talk about Jesus, ask good questions, evaluate hearts, evangelistic perception. We're exercising muscles that we often have not exercised for a long, long time. Now, we're not yet presenting the gospel. We've not gotten to proclamation or persuasion, but we're setting the stage. We're doing something that's very, very important. So it's need, there is a need to practice, 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 pray ourselves into the heart of Jesus, because some muscles are harder to develop than other muscles. So we pray ourselves into the heart of Jesus. We're going forth. We're seeing the lost. We're seeking the lost. We're trying to be the presence of Jesus. We're talking about Jesus. We're initiating spiritual conversations, asking questions, inviting people, being open, being transparent, being inviting. And, and then we can eventually learn how to open doors for proclamation and persuasion. This is the work of the church. For the most part, our traditional methods of evangelism have put the responsibility for the entire evangelistic process on one person, one person, one prospect. But I believe evangelism is the work of the entire body because different members of the body have different skill sets. And so as we think about our evangelism muscles, I think about the fact that some people are stronger than other people. Some people are more capable in certain exercises. So I begin to ask questions related to the exercises I mentioned. Uh, who in the church uh, has the strongest persuasion muscles? Uh, who in the church has the strongest proclamation muscles or gospel presentation muscles? Who in the church has friendship muscles? establishing relationships, simply being the presence of Jesus. Who loves to talk and talk and talk? Who's a good listener? Who's a good uh, listener asking questions, uh, encouraging others, helping others? So I encourage you to think about your evangelism muscles, practice using your entire set, but I, I want to encourage you to specifically find your gift and help the local church understand that evangelism is not the work of one individual with one person. God wants us to exercise our evangelism muscles and reach out with the gospel, strengthen our evangelistic muscles so that we can grow spiritually. I like the text of Philemon verse 6, I pray that you will be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. As we develop evangelism muscles and share our faith, we grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We become stronger disciples. The goal is to share our faith. The next article in this series will suggest a memorable model that will help you make sharing faith a part of your conversations each day. Well, I want to mention my website, some of what we have just shared is available as the front page article in April 2021, bobyoungresources.com, and that article and many other articles related to evangelism. Good news, you can share the good news of Jesus Christ. 
begins by exercising your evangelism muscles. I invite you to join me in the next video that we might think about an easy model that will allow us to share the good news of Jesus Christ everywhere we go. Until the next study, God bless.